What up, gang? Caroline Jackpot Time coming at you. It's Tuesday morning. Today's video is a little bit different, and it's not exactly going to be a pleasant one. Uh, I, I'm going to give you my honest and true opinion for once uh, on an individual I've been holding back on for a while. I've been holding back on him for a while, but I'm going to give you my two cents about one of your favorite personalities on here. Somebody everybody thinks is so funny that everybody thinks, everybody, all of you worship, you know. Can't, you, you got to clamor in front of your telephone, clamor in front of your TV set, wherever you get your media, wherever you consume it. Every time they're going to put something out. I'm giving you my true feeling. So cover your ears, cover your eyes if you don't like hearing and seeing ugly stuff, or just click off and don't watch the video. I don't really care. We're going to let it be known how I feel about one Lou Holtz. So, uh, so um, Saturday night after the Notre Dame versus uh, Ohio State game, Ryan Day comes off the field, is getting interviewed after the 17-14 win over the Irish in South Bend. And he starts uh, off just, just, just going all in, just balls deep on Lou Holtz, calling out Lou Holtz, wanting to know where he's at. And I'm like, well, what the heck's going on here? So I have to kind of backtrack. Uh, apparently, Lou, Lou Holtz has called his team soft. Called my team soft. They're not soft, they're fighters. They fought for four quarters. I don't know what he's talking about. Bah! All right. So, <laughs> you know, I go back and do my research. And the, the only time I can find Lou Holtz anywhere that someone can consume what he has to say is on Saturday morning on the McAfee segment of College Game Day. So they brought like this Lou Holtz imposter out to interview Lou Holtz. <laughs> and uh, he's talking about the, the Ohio State team. And obviously he's predicting that Notre Dame is going to win the game, right? Because that's just what he does. Because Lou Holtz has been a million different places to coach. He's coached at Arkansas. He's coached at NC State. He's coached at South Carolina. He coached at some like lower level school before he came to Arkansas or NC State. He even coached in the NFL. He coached at Minnesota too for a couple of years. Um, nothing, nothing uh, can compare to Notre Dame in his mind. He never mentions the other schools, really. But he always mentions Notre Dame. And um, he said that all the losses that Ohio State had, they were the less physical team. He said they lost to Clemson. They lost to Michigan twice. They lost to Alabama or whoever else. And the other team was more physical. Okay? Well, all those things are most likely true. They're true from what I saw. Now, when they lost to Clemson in the playoff game at the end of the 2019 season, it was a couple of ticky-tack calls that didn't go Ohio State's way. They actually got called for a targeting uh, by one of their defensive backs that, from my vantage point, was not targeting. So I don't say that's not being physical. Uh, and also, there was uh, a fumble by a Clemson wide receiver that was returned for a touchdown, I believe, or either it was recovered. It's been so long ago, I can't remember. Uh, but it was called an incomplete pass. And I believe that's how that went. So, yeah, you know, I don't know that they definitely got out physical there, but they've, they've gotten out physical by Michigan. So, th that part's true. So, Ryan Day is, is telling everybody that he called them soft. And so everybody, all the Ohio State fans are agreeing with Ryan Day. I listened to the Zach Smith podcast. And I told y'all the other night on my live stream, I've really stopped consuming that a lot more than what I used to because I just get tired of hearing about Ohio State. He could grow the platform he has like five times if he'd stop talking about damn Ohio State so much and start talking about the national landscape a little bit more. And they do talk about the national landscape, but it's not near enough. There's way too much Ohio State, not near enough national landscape. But they all are taking up for Ryan Day. Oh, no, yeah, he was right. Lou, 
you know, he, uh, what is it they say? He fucked around and found out, or he ran his mouth and, and he found out. They never said you were soft. He didn't say you were soft. He said you weren't as physical as the other team. He didn't even say you weren't physical. He just said you were less physical than the other team. People like to twist words anymore. This has been a thing since for the, probably the last 10 years or so. And, and talking about soft, yeah, soft. The country has just gotten softer and softer and softer. And these folks, they like to twist narratives, virtue signal, and make themselves out to be a victim. Which is exactly what Ryan Doe did. Made himself out to be the victim. He's the victim. His team is the victim. Oh, woe is me. They called me soft. They didn't call you soft. They said you just weren't as physical. On the flip side... If I was an Notre Dame fan, I'd be a little bit pissed because he gave them some extra motivation. Apparently, Ryan took that as bulletin board material. I don't know if Ryan Day must have, have somehow or another come off the Kirby Smart tree. He's Kirby Smart, this, was, this actually was something that actually was said that you weren't as physical as the other teams. Okay. Uh, we were talking about the, the South Carolina defensive lineman Tonka Hemingway at the uh, SEC media days saying that Tennessee and Texas A&M were the loud, loudest environments he'd been in. And he didn't mention Georgia. Well, he never said Georgia wasn't. He just didn't mention them. Maybe he just forgot that he played there. I don't know. Uh, but Kirby Smart used that as some kind of kind of weird motivation. Uh, well, it didn't really work. At least for a half it didn't. <laughs> Now, I don't think that uh, the final score against South Carolina was what any Georgia fan thought that it would be, or South Carolina fan for that matter. So maybe he went to the same school of bullshittery as him. I don't really know, but uh, sometimes you, you got to learn to accept a little bit of criticism and and take it the right way. And and maybe you did, Ryan Day, because uh, hell, your team won. Uh, Notre Dame gave you the ball game, but you won. So I guess it worked in that respect, but uh, I mean, a little less crying and a little bit more coaching. That's just what I'd like to see. And th this is this has been an, an, an epidemic uh, the past few years. There are a lot of coaches out there crying on on social media. They're crying to reporters, saying dumb things uh, to reporters, and just uh, overall kind of making general asses of themselves. You know. Um, uh, even Shane Beamer with the hot dog comment after losing to North Carolina. It's dumb. It's dumb. It was unnecessary. Um, yeah, you lost the ball game. Now, you're not, you're not out there trying to be funny and uh, make little quips and asides after you uh, just went out there and got smacked around by uh, North Carolina and their geriatric head coach. Just don't do that kind of stuff. So a lot of people... A lot of these coaches need to kind of, uh, I don't know, learn when it's when it's acceptable and right to say certain things and learn when it's acceptable and right uh, to keep things to yourself. That's all I really got to say about that. I got to go back to work. I'll see you guys later on. Appreciate it. Hit this video with a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the Carolina Jackpot channel if you're not subscribed already. We do college football videos here all the time. We do live streams all the time. And we did some really good stuff this weekend. We saw the Gamecocks win. And I'll be talking some more this week about the Gamecocks versus Tennessee. Uh, the line has come out. It was 11 and a half. Now it's moved up to Tennessee. Minus 12 and a half against the Gamecocks. I'm going to sit right here and tell you that I have never been more confident in the Gamecocks covering a spread than I have in this ball game. I'll tell everybody that. I'll put my hand on a stack of Bibles and talk about it. I'll go to the top of the highest mountain and I'll shout it off. South Carolina's covering that spread, and I feel that the uh, chances of them winning that game in Knoxville this Saturday night are very good. I'll see you guys later. Appreciate it. Peace, and I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Woo! Tennessee.